Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to another episode of Glamour and Grit, the podcast that pulls back the curtain on salon life and deep dives into what really happens in the salon. Um, it's all about the hustle and the creativity that fuels our work with the little moments of magic that make it all worth it. Here, it's all about the balance between the glamour we create and the grit it takes to make it happen, okay? I am your host, Tori Chantel, and today we're going to be talking about something that's on everybody's mind when they walk into the salon. We're talking about pricing today so whether you are a guest in the chair or you're the professional behind it understanding the value of the services that you're getting done is going to be the key to a great salon spirit so let's get into it okay so jumping in first i'm gonna kind of have a little chit chat with the stylist okay so one of the most important things that you could do is be upfront and transparent about your pricing okay make sure that your guests understand exactly what it is they're paying for and what the service is going to include so if they're getting a deep conditioner if they're getting a scalp treatment if they're getting um you know techniques that take more time you have to communicate that the details up front so that way when they get to the checkout like there's no surprises like for example you don't have to necessarily say like oh because this is a balayage it's going to be x y and z but you do need to get them to understand that because what they may be asking for is a little bit more intricate and it's going to take a little bit more time more product things like that help them understand that and then go through and then go ahead with the service so because there's nothing more frustrating than when you know you get to the front and then you go to pay and then all of a sudden it's this huge giant bill and you're like well you know what did i what did i get it's the same thing we go to the grocery store right in our mind it's like okay we only got like this small amount of things this is just gonna be enough for breakfast and lunch and then you get there to the to the checkout counter and then i just spent a hundred dollars but you budgeted 70 right like that extra thirty dollars is like yeah you may have it but that that may not have been allocated for that so we have to keep that in mind with our clients that they more than likely have set a budget of what they wanted to spend before they came to the salon so just make sure that you have the conversation with them about you know what's your budget and and being transparent whether or not you can fulfill what they want to get done within that budget or if they need to tailor it to something else or maybe wait till you know another time that's cool too but just have that conversation right um and here's an example right so if you have a guest whose hair is compromised right and they book a full highlight more than likely you're not gonna do that full highlight why because their hair can't handle it in the state that they're in right then so right now you're gonna have to do something a little bit alternative so maybe for this this go around you just do a gloss you know just better tone out the highlights that they previously had and then you do a protein treatment and then uh you know blow out or if you decided and this is where integrity is going to come into play if you decided to go ahead and do the highlight then maybe you just do uh, a smaller service right so instead of a full highlight maybe you will just do a mini highlight where you just have like maybe 10 foils you know you just strategically place it all over the head that way it still gives the illusion that you know it's brighter but at the same time you're not totally compromising the hair right like you still can kind of meet them in the middle and so um with that then you can add the olaplex treatment which would then you know from their standpoint if their hair's already compromised it would just help to repair their hair and then um you know you can do a deep conditioning treatment or things like that like help meet your client in the middle or for another example would be when someone books a silk press right and their hair is like deeply desperately dehydrated more than likely a silk press isn't going to happen for that particular service so that might be a good time to get them into a conditioning treatment and a protective style. Like, just be honest about their hair and then manage expectations, the good and the bad. And then, and you know, and if some people, for example, with the silk press, 
um, example, like if they decide like, no, I, you know, I really don't want to do that. I really don't want to do a protective style. You know, if they're super hell bent on getting the silk press, but you know, as a professional that that's not going to be good for their hair, then don't take the client. You know what I mean? Don't do things just because you need the money or you got to pay this, this phone bill or, you know, this and that. Don't do that. Like, and I know it's hard to let money walk out of the door because we deserve to live too and there are things we need and want to do as well but at the end of the day this business is built off of trust and integrity and if you're going around and you're just doing services just to be taking people's money that follows you so you know you want to do what's best what you think is best for the client if they decide to go to somebody else and somebody else decides to suppress their hair and then it turns out damaged you know, that, that's on them, but at least you gave them the information and the opportunity to go someplace else. So, just keep that in mind. But, um, also, too, it's not just about um, being transparent with your clients as far as, you know, what they're willing to spend, but also, like, charging your, your worth, too, without overcharging. Because I do understand that there are some stylists that are overcharging guests when they come in to get certain services and I and I get that that's on them however take inventory of your skills and your experience and what you know you're capable of doing like if you haven't taken the time to fully 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 at least start learning a color line in all its entirety don't come out the gate charging $400 for a hair for a highlight Especially when you know that whatever color line you're using, you don't really know what you're doing. You're just kind of mixing things, you know, together and you hoping that hair God's bless you. Like, don't, don't do that. But if you know that you have extensively done the work, done the research, you know, you know the product backwards and frontwards, like you could do it with your eyes closed, then, you know, okay, more so I can see why, you know, you may charge a little bit higher. But your pricing needs to reflect the quality of the services that you know for sure that you can provide, the time, you know, your skill set that you invest, and to the cost of, of running your own business. So don't feel guilty for charging your worth, but just make sure that you are pricing fairly and that you're not just taking advantage of people that um, trust you and are trying to support you. Also, too, a quick little side note for um, the girls that are more than likely like in a commission salon, make sure that everybody in the team is on the same page as far as when it comes to pricing. Like, especially when it comes to all the car salons, salon services and salon pricing, right? Because you don't want to have some one stylist saying, okay, this um, highlight is going to be $130, right? Then this other stylist comes by and it's like, well, it's going to be 250 We, You can't do that because the thing is, is that if you have one client and you're doing all of these things that if we're talking a la carte pricing should be a much higher than... You don't want to turn around and you lowballing yourself. And then when they get in the next stylist chair and then they charge them what the service is actually worth, now they're upset because you haven't been like it just creates discord in the salon when you do that. So just make sure that everybody is on the same page when it comes to salon pricing, specifically a la carte commission salons. Okay, so to my lovely, lovely salon patrons, okay, let's talk about things from your point of view and your perspective, okay? I just want y'all to truly understand that running a salon involves a lot more than just the time that you spend in the chair, right? Um, and and I get it, you know, you, you may not understand how a salon works, and that's not necessarily for you to get if you're not behind the chair however please understand and respect the fact that having a salon and owning a salon is still a business i know you having girl time i know you're going there to relax i know that you're going there to you know take your mind off the work week or get ready for an event or things like that but it's still a business okay there's still overhead costs there's still training there's still product costs and there's so many other things that go into running a business and especially when you are running a business that's producing high quality results. So when you see the price of something that you feel, you know, is higher than what you thought it was going to be, just try to take that into consideration when um, you are picking a salon 
looking for a stylist, things like that. Consider from your perspective, consider where you live. Are you in a major city? Are you in a small town? Are you in a suburb? Okay. How long has this stylist been behind the chair? What brand are they using? Even if you don't understand brands and all that kind of stuff, take a look at it. Is it more something that would lean towards like luxury or was it lean more towards drugstore? Neither one is right or wrong. Just look at all of those things and you just kind of know. And always go in and book a consultation if you're just not sure. Like just go in and, you know, sit down. Most consultations are complimentary. You have to check the salons that are around you. And then just go in there and kind of tell them what you're looking for. Kind of tell them where your hair is at. And then you can get a quote right then. Like, you know, most consultations take about 10 to 15 minutes. If it's a new guest, you know, um, clients that are a little bit more regular, their consultations don't take as long because you kind of know them already. But if you're new, it's totally fine. But a consultation is just a really fancy hair word for a conversation. That, that truly is, is all that it is. It's just a conversation. So just keep in mind that if you have a specific budget, like you set aside money for this specific salon trip, don't be afraid to let your stylist know. You know, most of us are more than happy to make or create something for you that is something that is, you know, not only attainable, but it's something that you can maintain at home. It'll be something within your budget. So just keep that in mind. But also too, even if something isn't in your budget, just be open to alternative suggestions that we might have or that we might adjust your service a little bit different like tweak it that way we can fit your budget so just remember that communication is key and it goes away on both sides so it you know it doesn't help if you start to shame stylists or start to kind of talk down on their work just because the price doesn't work for you quality cost and styles who invest in their craft are going to be the ones that more than likely are going to be worth it every single time so just keep that in mind just like i always use the bread owl analogy because it just it works right sometimes you may have a little bit of extra money say it's payday or somebody gave you a gift card whatever and you have a little bit of extra money you may go for the, like the artisanal bread right the the sourdough bread the rye bread like you may go for something a little a little bit umph, a little bit of extra right and then sometimes you may be in between blessings and then you have to get the the dollar white bread it, it just depends on what you have going on so don't look at someone's prices and say, oh, their prices are too high when you don't know anything about the stylist, first of all. And then also, too, don't don't use that as an excuse to belittle others that may find value in that person and say, well, that you know, that's right up my alley. Just because you can or cannot afford something doesn't make you better than the next. So just keep that in mind. So at the end of the day, just the goal is just to have a balance between um, charging what you're worth as a stylist and creating that experience that leaves your guests like happy and they want to come back and they, they kind of make you a priority. And then, you know, for stylists, you need to be upfront and you need to be fair and clear with your pricing and let people know what all they're going to get when they get stuff don't stick or shock them don't say you know oh it's going to be this and then add on for this and then add on just tell them the price you know what i mean and then just let them know what all is included in that price and then you know for guests it's just about recognizing the value and the services that you receive and being open about the budget that you need that's it you know if you like i said if you can't afford a full highlight it's fine. We can make a lot of things happen with even just the smallest amount of foils. You don't necessarily need a full highlight all the time. So, you know, it's totally fine. But just be honest about what you are kind of looking for. Be honest about your your lifestyle too. Like, can you maintain this look outside of the salon? If it's probably going to be a no, let's figure out something else. You know what I mean? Because like, that's the thing. I personally, with my guests, I don't want to give them something that they can't maintain at home. That defeats the whole purpose because the thing is you're gonna see me every four to ten weeks what are you doing in between that like you're only gonna be with me you depending on what it is you're only gonna be with me in between an hour to five hours so 
we, I need to I need to get you to where you can kind of hold it down for your for yourself and when you need help I'm right here okay because we're in this industry because we love what we do and we love the people that we serve we love helping people so if we keep the conversation open on both ends and we can be respectful on both ends and then be understanding then every time you have a visit it could be positive for both parties all right y'all that's all i have for this episode i know it was kind of, kind of short but thanks for joining me for glamour and grit so just remember salon pricing is it is a sensitive subject like i get that but if we just be open and we respect one another it doesn't have to be you know this big scary monster so if you found this helpful okay don't forget to subscribe don't forget to share this with your friends don't forget to um leave a review if you like if you have any comments or if you have any questions anything like that you can put that all down below and until next time stay gorgeous mm -hmm.